Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started with this next video that's going to focus on another student presentation that was done. I haven't reviewed this thing in a few years um, since the, she presented it, but we'll give it our best. So, um, trying to do it in 9 to 11 minutes. If it takes 8 to 12 minutes, so be it. So, all right, starting out. So, this particular paper um, is a particularly powerful paper in public health. It was published by these authors at University College of London, and it was published in the BMJ, or British Medical Journal, which has an outstanding impact of 27 and an H5 index of 146. And the paper focuses on job control and risk of coronary heart disease. And Sir Michael Marmot is one of the authors here, and this is his studies have been revolutionarily uh, revolutionary in epidemiology. So first of all, what is job control? And the best way to define this is think of a stressed worker um, punching into a time clock. Um, job control, you know, what time you show up and leave is dictated. That's not the only part of job control. So can your job lead to heart disease? So the Marmot study could be mentioned and cited that said that people with a higher pay grade get less cardiovascular disease. Cortisol or stress made in the body also linked to heart disease. So these should have references. I added these, by the way, a few years ago. All right, having a lot of job demands not linked to heart disease. So by having a lot of things to do does not necessarily mean that you're going to have heart disease. So these are three things to think about. Higher pay grade, less cardiovascular disease, stress, chemical, more heart disease. Having a lot of things to do does not increase your risk for heart disease. So given the previous knowledge by the authors, they believed it was job control, not job responsibilities, that would be a risk factor for heart disease among civil servants in the UK. So they did this study um, to study the psychosocial char characteristics in a workplace and its relationship with increased cardiovascular disease or coronary heart disease among civil servants. They studied 20 different civil service departments in London. The civil servants um, age between 35 and 55, 10,000 of them, most of them men, and about a third of them being women. The prospective cohort study is what they did, and here it began in phase one in 1985 and went for three years. Introductory letters were sent out, screening questionnaires looking uh, at things that might predispose them to cardiovascular disease. They also did an examination of cardiovascular disease. 73% of the people participated. Then, they did a postal questionnaire. 79% of the people that stuck with it from phase one did the survey. And then they did a postal questionnaire and a screening examination. So they actually visited with them or had them come in. And that resulted in 79%. So you lost some people each time. People used to participate in surveys a lot more in the 80s and 90s, by the way. During COVID-19, they say people are responding to their telephone surveys more while they're at home. So time is becoming in short supply. All right, so four coronary heart disease conditions were looked at. Pain located over the sternum that goes away in 10 minutes or less. That they have severe pain that periodically lasts for a half hour or more. If they were diagnosed with ischemic heart disease by a medical doctor or if they've ever had any coronary event like a heart attack. They did two methods to assess the psychosocial environment. They did a questionnaire where they would self-report, and it was done at the baseline and during follow-ups, with the mean follow-up period of 5.3 years. They also did an independent assessment where personnel managers rated the work environment. So somebody else identified it. They then used logistic regression to adjust for age, 
and the length of the follow-up period because older people and how long it took to follow up would probably be more likely to have had a heart problem at some point. As you get older, the risk goes up every time. All right, coronary risk factors like smoking, their cholesterol levels, which might indicate their diet, diastolic blood pressure, whether or not they were getting drug treatment for blood pressure, and their body mass index were all taken into consideration. So what did they find? Well, among all the participants in the study, the rates of angina were a little higher among women than men. Severe chest pain was a little higher in men than women, but still relatively uncommon. Ever having heart disease diagnosed in this population of 35, or I think 35 to 55 year olds, still pretty uncommon. So 1.2% versus 0.4% with heart disease in men versus women. And then coronary events, about 9% of the men and a little more than 9% of the women. That was at phase one. Phase two and three as we get a long, little further into the study. So this was initial study, phase two and three. Similar patterns for the most part, but just more disease, more chest and heart, uh, pain, 5.5. Well, actually pretty similar. Um, more angina, severe chest pain numbers are similar. Diagnosed heart disease went up 2.5% versus 1.8% in women. Any coronary event, we see that women, 12% of them in this study had a coronary event at some point versus 9% in the men. So it went up for the women, uh, didn't go up as much for the men, about the same. So what they find out. So there was a higher risk for coronary disease during the follow-up for men and women with low job control. Men had higher score than women related to, and that was not clearly showed in, their, in her presentation, so I don't know what that meant. All right, the adjusted odds ratio for low job control relating to a, having a coronary event so having the, um, the numbers here, not just men versus women, but actually having information on low job control versus high job control would have been beneficial. So the odds ratio is helpful. So, and this is the adjusted odds ratio. And the adjusted odds ratio says from their tables that low job control, like not having a lot of control over what you do, was associated with a 93% increased odds of having a coronary event compared to those that had job control. So pretty important. Looking at the odds ratios of angi angina, intermediate job control had a 36% increased odds. Again, the 95% confidence interval should have been presented here. They're missing. And I don't know why she didn't include them, but they should be included. So this is the reference group, so you won't see it. But intermediate versus reference, so intermediate job control versus high job control was associated with a 36% increased odds of angina. A twofold increase or 109% increased odds of angina was observed in those with low job control. Having severe chest pain, that did not achieve statistical significance. Her table that had ischemic heart disease is blocked out or I'm not quite for sure. Maybe these are the numbers for it and it's showing that they're not significant. So maybe that's what's going on here. So this is confusing. This table would need to be better constructed. Having any, any coronary event, again, having the 95% confidence intervals would have been good, but what we do, what I know from that paper is there was a 71% increased odds of having any coronary event if you had intermediate job control versus having a lot of job control. And if you had low job control, man, your risk was a lot higher. 2.77 fold increased odds or 177% increased odds of having a coronary event. So very powerful, powerful study here. Um, 
the discussion, there should be some more discussion here. What were the strengths and limitations? Uh, but the big points here, low control in the work environment was associated with a high risk of coronary heart disease for people that worked in these London offices. By giving the people more task and more variety of tasks and more decision making in the workplace could benefit public health. Clock watching may be bad for public health, but you know, those are decisions that businesses have to make. Conclusions also. Phase one had lower participation rates in phase two and three. So the people that stuck with the study were more likely to participate. So they may actually have been healthier. People that chose not to participate in phase one may have had less job control and less willingness to participate. So these results may actually be reflecting a volunteer bias that might make people healthier in the study at least. So we don't know who those phase one people were who dropped out if they were more unhealthy. Subjects or participants is the better word there who didn't answer a question on the questionnaire. They just assigned an average answer. And they state that there could have been informational bias due to self-report. So some people may have not said things truly because they thought they could help their job situation. Who knows? So we're at 11 minutes and 30 seconds there uh, on the total video time. So all that was presented in 9 to 11 minutes. What was great about this article and the PowerPoint that was put together was there was a lot of meaningful results that were in there. But the results could have been better um, organized with 95% confidence intervals more clearly displayed and cleaning this up. Also, the article uses or the presentation uses big fonts and a lot of white space, pretty good there. They should have mentioned some of the strengths of the article. Why was this such a good study? And one of the reasons why it was such a good study was they followed 10,000 people through this study. Now, back in the day, they used the term subjects, but nowadays we say participants. But it was a huge study. So that should have been a discussion item. There should have been a discussion. There should have been, what do these results mean? What do other studies say about this? There should have been some other references. They referenced Marmot's paper, but there should be more than, you know, there should be several references. Who else has used these results and what did they find? There should be a discussion section there. But overall, pretty good, you know, pretty good in terms of time and data and, and value for learning. So I'll stop it there, and hopefully that was helpful.